Welcome to Seeding Knowledge. This video discusses humidity control and addresses considerations that can be important when deciding what is suitable given your desired outcomes and your budget. Plant growth chambers and rooms are often sold without additive humidity or dehumidification. However, while controlling humidity is not considered standard, it can be important to ensure consistent plant response and subsequent interpretation of experimental results. You may think that you're controlling all the critical aspects of your controlled environment experiment, but without active humidity control, you're subject to the vagaries of the conditions surrounding the chamber due to the fact that there's air exchange from the outside of the chamber to ventilate it. The risk is that from season to season, you may have outcomes that you don't anticipate that would affect your research and the results of your research in ways unanticipated. Understanding that humidity can be a desirable variable to control, some clients opt for additive humidity control as it's relatively low cost. Spray nozzle, centrifugal atomizing humidifiers, ultrasonic humidifiers, and in some cases, steam generation are all methods of adding moisture to a chamber. Those pieces of equipment typically find their way into a chamber in a much simpler fashion. They can be integrated into a physical chamber without a lot of fuss. And once a humidity sensor is added and the control sequence accommodates set points and active proportional or on-off time proportional control of the humidifying device, it's taken care of in a very straightforward manner. It doesn't require a fundamentally different mechanical system or any other serious modifications at the time of purchase to the chamber. Some clients assume that since they have additive humidity, they're also controlling dehumidification, but that's not the case. Removing moisture from a chamber is a separate and oftentimes higher cost option because it involves more mechanical and electrical modifications to the chamber. If dehumidification is being considered, it's advisable it be pursued at the onset rather than as a retrofit. You could have a separate coil dehumidification system where the dehumidifying coil is forced to go cold enough to draw moisture out of the air by condensation. Similarly, what is often referred to as bypass uh, dehumidification. It uses the primary cooling coil uh, and a bypass damper to force the primary coil colder to dehumidify. Those are significant physical modifications from a standard non-dehumidification equipped chamber. And to do those after the fact as a retrofit is very difficult and costly. In fact, in some cases it's impossible to do. In considering whether to opt for both additive humidity and dehumidification, one should also carefully consider their reasons for wanting to hit a particular humidity target, because the equipment and cost implications can be significant. For one client in the UK that was utilizing a greenhouse to study maize, they desired tighter control than it was possible in their greenhouse, and they were looking to procure a large controlled environment room that could reach 80% relative humidity. There was a time that we were working with a very uh, good and engaging client in the UK that had been doing maize research in greenhouses for years. And she was greatly hampered by the seasonal variation even in a pretty well-controlled greenhouse, sophisticated greenhouse in the UK, not even in a very challenging climate, she just needed to have better control year-round. While the 80% humidity target was achievable, Convirin's technical team noticed an opportunity to reduce the overall cost to the client and value engineer a solution that better fit their budget. When we got to the high RH, she said, oh, I don't really need that. I don't need to go to 80. In fact, as a matter of fact, I, I don't think I want the chamber humidity to go above 65% RH. Well, this was an epiphany, it was a revelation. And the consequence of that is we were able to delete the complexity of the multiple lamp lofts. All of that could go away. And the lights were simply hung on rails. With these modifications, Conviron delivered the grow room with the specifications necessary and within the prescribed budget. Conviron has delivered thousands of growth chambers all around the world for decades. And we've dealt with these kinds of discussions and challenges successfully many times. And I just want to leave with the reminder that reviewing the actual performance requirements of a given body of research or a set of researchers that will be potentially using the equipment, it's very important to get feedback before a purchase decision is made because it could save quite a bit of capital cost, perhaps even allow the addition of another chamber or another important piece of equipment 
germane to the research. For more information, visit Conviron.com and reach out to us for a free consultation.